It might not look like it, but each one of these spinning columns is a sail. Put one on the deck of a ship, and if the wind's coming from the right direction, you spin the column, which catches the wind, pulling the ship along. It's called a rotor sail, and in general, the larger the column, the more thrust it generates, the less fuel that's used. North of London, engineers at Anamoy Marine Technologies are trialing their latest version. And then if you press the start button, hopefully, that starts a rotor sail of a certain area will give you the thrust of a traditional sail ten times that area, which on a ship re removes all of the issues with visibility um, and also access to the deck, access to cargo. New funding from the UK government's Clean Maritime Demonstration Competition, or CMDC, will help them develop a folding version as well as make aerodynamic improvements. The version being tested here was itself developed from funds won during a previous round. So the CMDC funding here, as you, as you can see, has been put to good use in allowing us to design and develop this smaller road sail which is suited for kind of smaller medium sized ships the fleet of smaller to medium sized ships is enormous so that unlocks a whole new raft of vessels which can have road sails installed and saves all of that extra <laughs> extra fuel which is obviously beneficial any reduction in fuel used means fewer greenhouse gases released. The most recent at-sea trial in various conditions around the world found running the sail saved just over 9% of the ship's fuel. That would save the largest ship thousands of dollars a day, and if each voyage made use of wind assist, the industry would reduce its CO2 emissions by as much as Singapore produces per year. But the International Maritime Organization wants net zero greenhouse gas emissions from international shipping by around 2050. And for that, wind assisted power won't be nearly enough. So the UK government, through this competition, is providing millions of dollars in funding to find other technologies that could go some way to putting the sector on a heading for net zero. There are many ideas about how to do it, and academics studying how to decarbonize the shipping industry break the strategies down into three broad categories. One of them is to electrify uh, a lot of the vessels, um, especially those that are on short distances, so like a Dover-Calais ferry, something that moves across a short body of water. Then there's increasing efficiency, of which sometimes we include wind assistance, so the use of wind to reduce the amount of power that you need to use on board. Um, but you are left with both of those for a portion of the fleet with a need for a liquid fuel. And so we will need a substitute to the oil that we currently burn in all of the ships internationally, um, more or less. And that, that synthetic fuel or alternative fuel is the one where a lot of the research needs to be done. When it comes to alternative fuels, Professor Smith believes the best candidate is ammonia, which can be put in a modified diesel ship engine and can be burned with 1-2% to of the warming impact of a conventionally fueled engine. Fundamentally, it's the cheapest way to produce a liquid fuel that is scalable and capable of meeting the 200 million tonnes of oil consumption that the sector has at the moment, um, and it's the cheapest to store it as well, which is very important. The challenge, he believes, is creating the supply chain here on land that could produce the vast quantities of ammonia needed and passing the policy that will mobilise the hundreds of billions of dollars needed to do that. For CNA, I'm Stuart Smith in London.